the leadership does not have to do anything. Or Burtzorg, the nursing organization in the Netherlands with 40,000 regionalized nursing cells with a corporate office of just a few hundred people who are mostly coaches who just go out and coach and enable those groups to do a better job. So they're out there, they are leading the way. They're not perfect, they have their failings, but they're starting to play with these elements of the OS and what they could be and how they could work. And what I'd like to leave you guys with are the principles, the design principles that we've identified that cut across all these examples. When we look at companies that are leading the way, when we look at complex adaptive systems from your immune system to a colony of ants, how they tend to prioritize the way they design the system. And so these are those seven ideas. The first is, actually these are these six ideas. Uh, the first is purposeful. So are you organized around a meaningful purpose in every division and team? Is there fractal purpose where people have unpacked and understand ultimately what the purpose is? Are you networked in the sense that you have decentralized autonomous cells that form and unform, connect and disconnect based on market pull rather than leadership command? <laughs> learning, are you organized for efficiency or are you organized for learning and adaptation? Do you have a mechanism for change that every employee has access to, that every employee has the capacity to change their roles, the rules, the strategies at the place where they meet the market? Autonomous. Uh, is, is authority distributed? Have you essentially pushed it out to the edge so that people and teams and cells are free to act? They're not too bound by process, or if they are, it's by process that they themselves developed to control these outcomes. Uh, market driven, are you organized from the outside in based on what the market wants, how the market wants to engage with you, and where it ultimately seems to be going? Are you reacting and responding to that edge of the membrane? And then finally, transparency. One of the hardest to do, but one of the most beneficial. Are you actually organized around transparency, around the free flow of information, around access, around turning each meeting, each project, each document into exhaust that someone else can use, that someone else can leverage? And just thinking differently about the trust that is required to enable all these things. Because that's really the prerequisite of everything we're talking about. When you look at all these systems, what they have in common is trust. They hire the best people, they screen carefully, they thoughtfully engage and develop people, and then most importantly, they trust them, they trust each other to make decisions in line with the purpose and to ultimately manifest that purpose in the way of working, in the way of organizing, in the way of delivering value to communities, to constituents, to employees, to shareholders, to buyers, to customers, etc. And that's the big idea. So what I really, really hope that I can leave with you is the idea that if you start to think about these things, if you start to think about them against that OS canvas, those areas of the business, the structure, the authority, the decision making, the meeting rhythms, et cetera, that you see a path to make a small change. And the small change will lead to better results and then you'll make another and another and another, which is how the companies on the list found their way, sometimes in years, sometimes in decades, to a better way of working and organizing that we fully believe is the only way to find success in the 100 years ahead. And so with that, I thank you.